and uh, and the idea is that right we would like to go back and uh, and you know yeah right so what we'll do is we next right what we'll do is we'll actually look at how those things right that we have already seen in plane rotation and how do they turn out to be special cases of this because this homography is supposed to imbibe everything right you can ideally have whatever you want you can have a 3d rotation that right? whichever you know whatever normal you want to choose you can choose so the plane can be inclined i never said the plane is front or parallel it's some n right it could be at whatever inclination it is but then the fundamental fact is that it is still a still a planar world okay this is still a planar world now okay what you are looking at so what this ideally means is that if you had an if you had a scene that consisted of multiple planes okay then then there is no single homography that will actually relate one image to another okay, which is why a 3d scene for example right this room if you take okay now there is some plane in the front and there is some plane in the back and so on right so you cannot if i take and uh, two views of the scene by translating a camera there is no single homography that will actually relate the two it has to be a plane or world so but then then you might ask and why is it at all useful right and who right? who wants to then use such a homography the idea is that the farther you go okay see right many a time either you actually have a plane or scene or imagine imagine that you are sitting right you are flying from somewhere and then you are taking an image of let's say the, the land right then normally what happens is we tend to ignore the changes in depth right given that we are sufficiently far away right so so even if there is a mound let's say you know there is a pit or there is a mound then we will say okay right relative to from where i am that you see difference should not matter so much and in and in reality right it actually it will, it will actually work very well because those differences right which will should ideally lead to some issues will will become lesser and lesser as you go farther and farther okay so either you already have a scene that is that is nicely planar in which case you can of course straight away go go ahead and use it in fact right there are also many situations when you have see planar images right it's not like you don't have planar scenes in fact the whole world is supposed to be what is called right a manhattan manhattan world right that's what they say if you if you right what that means is the world is made up of mostly the buildings are made up of vertical and let's say horizontal plates primarily right manhattan world that's what it's got uh, which then means that uh, means means that you know you could take let's say one image for this plane one image for that plane and then you could still relate it to but if you take one common view then you cannot because you know there's not a single plane that you can use to model so that way even if you bifurcate a 3d world into different planes and on every plane you can we can work with this kind of homography but ideally when you say uh, you have a homography you really mean that right, you should be able to go from go from one view to another with a single transformation now there is a special case where even if the world is 3d you can still do this that is the only time we can do that is when you simply rotate a camera you don't translate because the parallax right parallax comes only when you actually move right that's why this way right our eyes are such that i think i told you before right you have eyes that are separated you don't have one eye over the other right wherein you could rotate the other or something and get another view if you do that you won't get any information about depth because the parallax has to be there right so so in fact uh, right so so we'll so we'll see we'll see with some examples right what this actually means but at this point of time so what you have to realize is that a planar world right you can you can very nicely map different views of a of a you know, planar world through a single homology so whenever any approximation of a surface can be whenever you can approximate any surface as approximately planar homography is the way to go but again this will still right we still haven't haven't said how do we compute this homography right we haven't talked about all that just assuming that somehow we have this homography in reality we let us we let us compute this then we let to robustly compute it and so on so right, that will that we will that we do along the way but for the time being just assume that uh, uh, right uh, for the time being we just we just have to understand what the homography is going to kind of do for us okay so let's come back to that you uh, know special cases okay what was the first one let's say we take in plane translation see each one of these right will tell you something something you uh, know interesting so in plane translation so what does that mean right in plane translation actually means that that right, you have a uh, okay now see now So at that time, right, we wrote down a very simple equation. We simply said x t y t is equal to x s y s plus some t x t y. We didn't even bother of what. Why are we writing the t x t y? Where is that coming from? What camera motion will cause it? We didn't at all bother about any of that, right? Now, now we need to kind of worry about what will what will that be? Right? So, so in this case, right, in this case, the way you imagine in plane translation is that because you want all the all the image points to move by the same amount, right? T x t y is is the same for all pixels. they don't change so it has to be a global shift right so when you want a, when you want when you want such a global shift then it means that this camera that this plane has to be frontal parallel because right i mean if you, if you look at 
right? Or, I mean, how do you understand that? So, if you if you take the perspective sort of a projection model, what did you have? You had x equal to f x by let's say uh, let's say some z, and then y is equal to f y by z, right? So, if you actually move the plane such that x becomes x plus delta x, right? Then then you will delta okay capital X, then you will actually move to a new point which is f x by z plus f delta x by delta x by z, right? And similarly, you will get here, which is x plus delta x by z. But then, this is not only true for for this point. This is also true for every other point. This is x one y one, let's say, right? Which has x one y one z one as its coordinates. Okay. So let me just put. But then, delta x is the same because I'm just moving the scene by delta x. So delta x and delta y will be what they are. So we have x f x one, and then delta x by z one z one here is z one. Now take another point x two, which is at some X two y two, but z because it's a front to parallel plane. The z can't change, right? So f x two by z. So so the, so so there is nothing like z one. So I'll remove this z one. They're all at z because it's a it's a front to parallel plane. No, every every guy is sitting at z. So now this also I'll remove this. Okay, so it all becomes z. So now you can see that in f x two by z, and then x two moves by a delta x because the whole plane is moving by delta x. So so if you see this, right? This will again turn out to be. f x 2 by z plus f delta x by z so so this so this motion okay there should be an f here by the way oh yeah okay there's there's this f. so so f delta x by z right so you see that they would all move by the same amount if it was a front to parallel plane imagine if it was inclined right, then this is no longer true because a point in the front which have, will have a z that is smaller a guy that is zooming because this plane is inclined so some other point will have a, will have a different z and therefore You cannot have this equation where you say t x and t y is going to be a constant for all the. Okay, that's why I said you have to go back and sort of right imagine what situation will lead to will even lead to a t x t y that is constant. Right. So in this case, what this means is that you have an n unit normal because this is the unit normal of the plane, and uh, because this plane is front to parallel, that means it's aligned with respect to the optical axis of the camera. Correct. Right. This is the optical axis of the camera, and this plane is sitting right, uh, right orthogonal to it. Right, so n will be zero zero one, and since in this case rotation, we are not doing any kind of rotation, so R is simply identity. This is simply an simply an easy inclined translation, and then as far as your a goes, a is a is that uh, well anyway right? I mean a has no role because your R is anyway identity, right? What about your t? See, because in order to compute the homography, you need R, T, and transpose, right? And then D, of course, D is something that we that we that we kind of do not know. So T is, let us say that we are allowing in-plane translation. That means we can have T X T Y. That means this plane can go like that. It cannot come forward, right? Here is my camera. I can go only like this. I can go like that on the plane. I can go, but I cannot come forward and backward because that will mean that will be that will be a T Z motion. Then, in-plane means in-plane. You stay inside the plane. Right, so T X T Y and T Z should be zero, correct for the camera. Right, this is for the camera. <coughs> Now, if you go back and do R plus one by D T N transpose, okay, which is what we said is your homography. Right, what will you get? R will be one zero 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 one zero 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 one plus one by D, where D is the D is the amount by which the by, by which this plane is away from the camera center. So D, which is something where that we do not know, we don't have access to the information because we can only see the image. So one by D, and then T is what? T X, T Y, zero, multiplying zero zero one, which is the which is the plane normal because it is front to parallel. So one zero 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 one zero 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 one plus what do we get here? T X. Oh, sorry, the first guy is zero, right? So zero. Zero t x by d, zero zero t y by d, zero zero zero. Add the two up, we get one zero t x by d, zero one t y by d, zero zero one. Right. That is your homography matrix now. And if you know, you know, if you know, if you know, multiply. What did you have? If you know multiply, one zero t x by d, zero one t y by d, 
zero zero one with with a homogeneous source coordinate. Let's say let's say we multiply with some source image coordinate and we want to go to go to a, go to a target. What do you get? What will this be? X s plus T x by d y s plus T y by d and one. Okay, now this is x t y t one, and this is what we had written as x t y t is equal to x s y s plus t x t y. Right? If you go back, okay, this is how we started. Okay, now this t x is t x by d, t y is t y by d, and as you can see, right, t x t y is not the same as the camera motion. Right, so 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 what this actually means is that if you have okay, which is also the reason why just looking at the image coordinate, you can never tell what was the camera motion, unless you know unless unless you know this depth, unless you know what is a small d. Right, you can never tell. For example, I can get the same t x by 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 having uh, you know by having a what is that by having a small uh, if my d is small, then I then my t x t x can be smaller. Right, but then if I'm very far away, then to get the same image motion, I need to I need to move a lot more. Means my th will have to be higher, right? So, so this so this notion of depth is actually coming from there. You can see that, right? When you're closer, the image motion is less. When you're farther off, uh, sorry, when you're closer, the image motion is higher because the d is small for the same camera motion, right? Imagine that uh, that I move, let's say, right, one centimeter. Okay, that's my camera motion. But if my d is small on the image plane, it moves like one by d, and d is small. Whereas if I'm very far away and I move by, let's say, one centimeter the, on the image plane, I'll move much less. Because my d is now high, my motion camera motion is still the same. It's only one centimeter, right? That is why, unless you have a sensor on the camera that tells you the camera motion precisely, you cannot tell how much the camera moved because you do not know how far away is the camera when you when you image the scene. Okay, that's why that's why when we wrote it, we simply said t x t y. But now I hope you are able to appreciate the fact that you can't simply write t x and t y, right? Without okay, all that right behind that, there is all this interpretation about what is the scene. Which way is the camera moving? Right? What what kind of a relative motion between the camera and the scene will lead to a global shift? Okay, and this is called actually a global shift. Okay, because all pixels are moving by say, t x and t y. Okay, so this is one simple case. Let's go on to the next one, which will be which will be a rotation. Okay, which is which is in plane rotation. Two. So let's at least do in plane rotation today. In plane rotation. What is it like? So, in plane rotation means what? Uh, okay. By the way, okay, yeah, right, we will also do that. So, in plane rotation means that uh, means that you have a scene, right? And and uh, and then in plane rotation means about the optical axis you are simply you are simply rotating. Okay, that is z about the about the z axis. That is in plane rotation. Out of plane would mean that would mean that you would actually you know rotate about x or you would rotate about y. That means you can do something like that or you can do something like this, right? But z is this. So you can only do this. Okay, that is in plane rotation. You are not going out of the plane again. Okay, so when you have an when you have an in plane uh, in plane sort of a rotation, then your uh, then your r, right? You need to find out r, which we said is e power is s theta, and let's say that we are actually rotating by some theta. Let's call that theta z. Okay, just to indicate that this is a this is a rotation about the z axis. Theta z instead of theta, I'll write this as theta z, and uh and again okay now in order to in order to get that kind of a relationship right which we had the like cos theta sin theta minus sin theta cos theta you can actually verify that your n should still be a fronto parallel plane that means it should be 0 1 and uh, and because you are because you are rotating about the z axis see right these two are completely independent okay i can actually rotate about the z axis but then the but then my plane normal could be whatever it is But in order to get that in-plane rotation, right? When you want to, when you want to see what happens to to that particular equation that you saw, which is a very nice form, cos theta sine theta minus sine theta cos theta. If you want to imagine what the scene and what camera will take you there, okay? Then the one that will take you there is a is equal to zero, zero zero one. Okay, because because right, it is simply a rotation about the z-axis. Have it here. So so I just I just wanted to verify. Okay, now a is a is zero. For all these are transpose. Okay, so these are all uh, column vectors. Huh? In this column, a is a column vector. So, so please verify. S is of course easy to see because you had zero, and then uh, you know you had uh, 
what is it? AZ, right? 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, this goes by that 0, right? AZ, AX, and so on, minus AZ. So, this is a, this is a skew symmetric matrix. <laughs> Verify that S square, if you multiply this with itself, right? I'm not going to multiply it all here. We just, uh, let's just uh, uh, show that. I well, leave it to you to show that this is minus 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, and 0, 0, 0. Okay. I will just leave it to you to check this. Okay, now, if you if you can if you can verify that these these are true, then we know that your R is okay, and uh, this is all coming from coming uh, and anyway. By the way, because it's in plane rotation, what about your T? Your T is simply zero 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 because this is just in plane rotation. There is no no translation. Therefore, irrespective of this n, right? You will simply a T and transpose, so that whole term will drop out. All that all that remains is R. So R is uh, R is I plus what was that s into sin theta plus s square into 1 minus cos theta. So, in this case we will write this as theta z because we said this is actually a rotation about about this about the z axis right. So, what does this mean? So, we will have i which is 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 plus sin theta z if you do so 0 sin theta z 0 minus sin theta z 0 0 0 0 0. Uh, plus a square okay, is this guy a 1 minus cos theta. So, this will become cos theta z minus 1 0 0 0 then again cos theta z minus 1 0 0 0 0. Now, add all the 3 up okay, then you will get a 1 minus 1 is 0. So, you get cos theta z then sin theta z <laughs> 0 then minus sin theta z Okay, because of this addition, then 1 plus 0 plus that is cos theta z, then 0, we have 0, 0, 1. Okay, multiply this with xs ys 1, then, then you will be able to clearly see that this will come out to be uh, the form. I won't work it out here, just you uh, know, you can see, you can verify that this will be xt yt is equal to, okay, and, uh, and also, right, you should also. I can show you in the next class that it does not always mean that the last entry after you multiply by h will always turn out to be 1. Okay, these are special cases where it is turning out to be 1. There can be cases when after you multiply h with this xs ys 1, see as far as the source coordinate is concerned, you will always take it as xs ys 1, right? Because that is that is your actual coordinate. But when you multiply that by h, it does not always mean that the last entry will turn out to be 1. You can have some number there. And then to get the actual target coordinate, the target image coordinate, you should scale the first two guys by the by the by the third one. Okay. I'll show you one, one example like that. This this turns out that the first two cases are simple and then you are getting an entry one for for uh, for X T Y T. Okay. At the end you're getting X T Y T one. But it need not always happen. You can get something else as, as a third entry. So this you can easily show is is the one that you saw earlier. Cos theta z, sin theta z, minus sin theta z, cos theta z, right. So this would be a clockwise rotation about the about the z axis multiplies x s y s. Yeah. So the following class, right? What we will we will also see how we can do shear, right? How shear probably I'll just leave it to you as an exercise. Maybe I should make you think uh, scaling, for example. Some things at least we'll show here so that you get a you get a proper visualization of how these things happen. Mm.